morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Chosen Happy Thursday. Hope everybody's having an amazing, beautiful, stunning, and smart day. Speaking of beautiful, stunning, and smart, it's Jackie O. Hello, Jacqueline Follet. How are you today? Hey, Letter Delay. I'm doing well. Are we going to be honest? We're going to be honest. That no, it's like- Jackie, let's lie. Really? Even though we said on the show today slash yesterday that we were recording this on Wednesday. Okay, okay, it's Wednesday. Claudia, we're authentic to a fault. You know this. I know, like, why can't we just pre-record our episodes without, like, word vomiting? Like, okay, it's not Thursday. You caught us. But it, there's nothing to catch. Like, um, again, we need to remind ourselves. It's our show. It's our rules. No, and we're, like, kind of constantly putting this pressure on ourselves, and we really need to stop. Yeah, like, we can make the, our own rules. We can record anytime we want as long as the episode drops. And you know what else? We get what we want. And this winter break, we want Jordan. Also, I feel like it is germane to the episode that we be brutally honest about the time of day because I do think that it affects the episode. I do. No, I'm not going to lie. When we pre-record episodes, it doesn't happen a lot, but every now and then, you know, Jackie and I aren't available in the morning. So the night before, we'll record the episode for that day. It barely ever, ever, ever happens. But sometimes it does. And we, I think, are like the craziest during those episodes. No, not even crazy necessarily, just different. You know, the day has taken its toll on us. So We've true. been through stuff. And I feel like every morning when we do the toast, you ask me like, hi, how are you? Like, what's going on? And I completely forget what I did the day before. Like, right. tabula rasa, every day. Why are you doing your makeup and not listening to me? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. not doing my makeup. I'm not yeah. doing my makeup. Let me tell you. Because, you know, my... No, you know my lash lift is my new personality. Yeah. Um, they gave me these little spoolies. They say always, you know, try and brush every morning and night. So I just forgot and the spoolie was sitting right here. I'm 100% listening. I'm just brushing my lash You're going to have know. to tell your spoolie that you can't brush right now because you're busy. Okay. Spoolie, I have to go. Bye. Yeah. I'm sorry. You were saying? I was saying that usually in the mornings, like I don't remember what I did the day before. Mm-hmm. Tabula rasa. But now, like, I remember what I did today. Oh, I remember. It's still very in the front of my mind. I recorded the Redheads today, which will be up on Thursday, but the episode was so long because the book was- This Thursday? Today. Today. So you guys, you have to talk to people like it's Thursday. Okay. The episode is going to be, is up today. It might not be up up already. I don't know about that because I have to edit four people's audios. I think we recorded for like an hour 30. I'm going to bring it down, but- there was, there's a lot to edit because I want to mm-hmm. shorten it a little bit and that's going to take me a few hours and it's already nine o'clock and I haven't started. So yeah, girl is busy. Anyways, new episode of the Redheads coming at you. And that was a major key, major key of my day today slash yesterday. A major key of my day yesterday, <clears throat> today, is the dresser arrived. Look, it's right behind me. You could see. Yeah. Having a dresser is so life-changing, especially when your clothes have just been in in piles on the floor, like where the dresser would have been. The dresser is now here, and my drawers are filled with my underwear and my leggings, and I just feel so good about it. I'm so happy for you. It's so nice to have a dresser. I have a dresser, but it's not- Without a dresser? It's not the right dresser for me. Living without a dresser, less than living with a dresser. That's profound. Was that Socrates? How do you pronounce the word D-R-A-W-E-R? Depends what part of the country I'm in. <laughs> Drawers. No, come on. Drawers. What's the it's other like way? A, it's like a really, like, it's a, it's a bad word. Like, they should have it had is, something better. It is a bad word. I was saying it, I said it to Harry, like, t- the other day or today, and I remember feeling like, that's kind of a confusing word. Drawer. Drawer. Yeah. Like, what the hell? Yeah, like I kind of wished what I was talking about like had another word because I just feel like that's a hard word for a child. Oh, definitely. It's a hard word for me. Like, and I'm what'd you say? Day. And also it's like, I, I'm pretty sure draw is what I do with my crayons, not Right, and I the kids my, are, they know, they know draw like right. draw, like color. Not where I keep my clothes. And this one book that we read, um, it's like the sequel to The Grinch. It's like, and he drew, 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 drew. And it's like, oh, oh, drew and God. draw in my drawers? Dr- oh, and then drawers is like your underwear. Right, it's like the Grinch drew. And that's also where my, I keep my pajamas. Yeah, the word draw is like a dresser to color, underwear. Like, why does it have so many meanings? I don't know. It's um, not that great. Mistake, mistake, God. Another thing that I was thinking, because tonight I was reading the book, The Rainbow Fish. Have you read that book you recently? Mean, 
you mean last night you were reading the book the rainbow fish yeah. <laughs> last night we were reading rainbow fish and of course it's a classic because it's with beautiful. the colorful scales with the colorful scales obsessed but i hadn't read it obviously in decades Me neither. and i couldn't have told you what the storyline was but i'm finding it to be a little problematic <gasps> Why? What's what's it about? Rainbow fish is over party. So basically there's a fish in the sea that's rainbow fish and he is the most beautiful fish in the sea and he has the scales that are shiny and like one day a little fish comes and asks him for a scale and he's like, no, like go away. Scram. Are you rude? Yeah. But, and he also like doesn't have friends because he's like so beautiful and he just kind of like floats around well, does all he day. not have friends because like everybody makes fun of him or because he's a dick? No, they want him to play with them. I think, oh. but he's just like too beautiful. Like he's just like too into himself. And then someone asked him for a scale and he was like, no. And then he had no friends and he was a big loser and he was lonely. Okay. So they said like, go see the octopus. Like she's like the wise puss. And the octopus okay, says- that's obviously, you're, but in this, if we ever did like a toast adaptation of Rainbow Fish, like you are the wise octopus and I am the egotistical fish. But I, no, I don't like love her, her advice because she said that you should give away your shiny scales. And so the book, like he goes and he gives a scale to everyone. He's, he's left with zero scales and I, and then he's happy and uh, he has friends. And I just felt like the message is kind of like, you have to dull your shine in order. No. Okay. This is so to get problematic. Along. No, so problematic. One, yes. Dull your shine. Clearly that's a message that's being spread. But also like, why can't this book teach kids? Like if you have something of value, whether it's beauty, smarts, whatever it is, like to be gracious. Yeah, like you could still play with them and, and be nice. Right. And it was also like giving like a little bit of communism. It's like this one yeah. fish oh, can't Everybody have, gets my scales. Yeah, I have to distribute my scales equally. And also at the end, I don't even think he had one scale. No, this is dumb. I, I found it to be extremely problematic. Rainbow Fish is over party. I, I could get behind that hashtag Rainbow Fish is over party. And I was reading and I was like, where is this going? Is this a good thing that he's giving away his skills? I feel like he's dulling his shine. Sure, he okay. was a little bit of a prick, but there are other ways without taking away the thing that makes you special. So that I feel happens a lot with like children's books. Like I remember the first time as a somewhat like a conscious adult that I went back and reread The Giving Tree, which was my favorite book. Oh my God, you could cry from this book. It's so sad and pathetic. Like yeah. it's heartbreaking. Why the are you reading that? It should be called The Nishvagina. Tree. The Nish Vagina. <laughs> okay, that's another Yiddish word that we've, I don't think, ever used. Such a good on. word. It's like a, a thankless. Yeah, like twat. Wait, twat. Nish, hold on. It, it, I'm, oh, it is really hard to describe Yiddish words, especially ones that have like matriculated. No, that's the thing know. about Yiddish. That's why it slaps so hard because they don't have direct translations. That's why we go to these words. Okay, I'm looking up. Nishvagina, but like it's how do you how would you even spell Nishvagina? Let me try. It's like vagina. Nishvagina Yiddish. No, it's like not coming up. It, it's a, yeah, it's like a, it's honestly you know what it is, Jackie. Mm. It's a thoughtless little pig. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It That's what Alex Baldwin the, was trying to say. The Nishvagin tree. The niche for giving tray. That tight title. But how do you spell it? The N I S H space. In this in this context, it would be V A G I V I N G. The niche for giving tray. Unless it's niche for. The classic F V swap. The classic swap. Niche for Guinea Yiddish. That's also like one of the great things about having um, like a lot of Jewish friends is like, I feel like the Yiddish words, Yiddish, for those who don't know, is a is a lost language. It's not really spoken. Um, but, you know, the Jews of yore brought it with them to the States and it's slowly lost whatever. But every family like has their own Jewish, I mean, Yiddish phrases that um, like that never stayed with them, that, that trickled with down. Them. But that doesn't mean they're like, everybody knows the mainstream ones. Like, you know, mensch. Putz and Mensch and Schwitz. Like, everybody knows the classic ones. But every family, like, has their own that, like, I honestly feel like are made up. Um, and then, like, you go to someone else's house and they're using Yiddish phrases. And, like, you don't know them. And then every now and then you have, like, a crossover. I was just with Abe. I was telling him about how we always use the word frask. <laughs> That's a good one. He had never heard it. And he, he his family is, like, very Yiddish, very Ashkenaz. And he was like, what's a frask? And I'm like, oh, you know, you give a frask. <laughs> a frask is like a hit. A big slap, like a frask. No, but it also could be like, you know, like a 
a punch or an elbow. It's not necessarily like a bitch slap. It's a frosk. Yeah, no, in our house, like, if you wanted to use it in a sentence, you would always say, like, and I gave him such a frosk. That's not a sentence. Oh. I didn't mean in a sentence. I just meant, like, you know, shut up, okay? <laughs> yeah, also, if you do not know, Yiddish is a combination of Hebrew and a, a, an amalgamation of, like, Eastern European, European. languages. So it is... Um, that's what it is. And yeah, that's what our and ancestors And they spoke it spoke. like in the shtetls. It's very Fiddler on the Roof. Yeah, it was also, a lot of it was genocided in the Holocaust. So we, yes. we take what we can get. But yeah, it's like passed down It's the to language us. of our old country. But I yeah. do want to say, I've, oh, I've known Yiddish like my whole life as a language. I obviously don't speak it. I know phrases. I had never heard anybody um, speak it like conversationally. Until a few years ago where I went to, it was actually like a really special event where like we got to hear this woman speak who was like a, a scholar of Yiddish language, which most people, there's probably like 15 in the whole world. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's like started to read a poem, like a famous Yiddish poem. And when I tell you, she sounded so fucking weird. Like I could not stop laughing. Like <laughs> she literally said like, a book about like. <laughs> it's like she's speaking I believe, no, Jackie, It was literally gibberish. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Because it's like she's speaking Hebrew wrong. She's speaking Polish wrong. She's speaking yeah. German wrong. It doesn't Jackie, sound we right were, because it's like, all I felt them. like I was back in high school like giggling in the back of a classroom. Like I couldn't stop laughing. That's so funny. Did you know that I took a college course uh, called I did Yiddish? Know. And I feel I like that is underrated and more colleges should offer it. And I got so much out of it and it's such a cool class. Mm-hmm. And it's giving, like, ally to the Jewish community. So correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm, I'm really not a smart person. I think it's, like, so important that we always remember that. Like, is Yiddish giving, like, Latin? Because it's lost? Yeah. And it's, yeah. like, of your? In the sense that it's of your and that it's mm-hmm. lost, yes. But there are, <laughs> right, like, okay. thousands of lost languages. But, no, Latin is actually oh, are the there? opposite. Because, well, yeah, we would never know. That's, like, a bug out? Like, where you invented a whole language? Thirty. It's Tower of Babel. Babel. It's Babel. It's Tower of Babel. Babel. But Latin is like an is you know the origin of language. So right. it's kind of the opposite of Yiddish, which is like two languages put together, not like root. Okay, language. okay, I got it. Yiddish is giving Creole. I don't know a lot about Creole. Oh, Creole is French and it's like French English. They, they speak it in the Caribbean. It's yeah. like a combination of like a bunch of languages. Yeah. Creole language. Uh, yeah, so that's like our version. Haitian, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fascinating. Cool. Oh my god, look at us being linguistic queens. Oh, don't get me started on the word linguistics. You guys know my story. We are linguistic queens. We always talk about languages because of Tower of Babel. Yeah, and just because we're like smart people, you know? Yeah, and language is fascinating. Language is fascinating. I mean that. Should we use our fascinating language to dive into the Fast Five? Sure, if there's nothing else. I mean, we don't have to. Like, I'm, I'm in no particular rush. I guess I'm technically in a rush to do everything well, that I haven't done yet today, you know? Yeah. Like, I have so much to do. Plus, the Redhead's editing. I need to get into the editing bay. I know you kind of admitted something vulnerable today, uh, yesterday, excuse me, on the toast that the Redheads is a nonprofit. But, like, would the Redheads ever consider hiring an editor? Like... <laughs> No, I'm too protective of it. And I've also yeah. thought recently, like, we kind of need to hire a social media manager because I do it. And I, if you follow us closely, like, it comes in waves. You know, there's right, droughts right. and there's there's rainfall. It's based on your, like, personal social events calendar. Yeah. And so I really should get some help with that. But it's just not that important to, like, be Don't on top. Okay. that. No, no, it's like our social media, we figure it out, you know. It's it's going. It's busing, huh? and It's busing, huh? It's fine. Yeah, to get an editor for the episodes would be good. But it's like, I know what I want to take out. I'm just too protective of my people. Also, okay. even though the Red Heads is a non-for-profit, mm-hmm. we did have an, a sponsor on the episode. We do have sponsors, like probably one or two per episode, but it, it doesn't cover everyone's fee, you know? So it, um, so- it sounds like you're just a poorly run business. Yes, no, we're. I'm not in it for the money. Yeah, no, but by the way, like, the Redheads, like, sell a lot of merch. I think that's worth mentioning. Yeah. But our sponsor, everyone was really excited. It was Caraway. Was it? Oh. And Caraway sent all of the girlies I already had. Oh, but they sent yay. everyone a nonstick frying pan, and they were obsessed. 
Oh my god, love that! What's the code? Don't touch. Redheads. Talk. No, no. Use code redheads. Test. Come on, guys. We need more sponsors. <laughs> it's a code to test. Just give throw the redheads a bone. Code redheads. Yeah, throw the redheads a bone. Use code what? Red. Redheads. Redheads. So that's Does it make you giggle. With when the you redheads, see and by the way, I chose your book. <gasps> None of this is true. Lisa Jewell. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I also feel like. I need to check. I feel like I had a dream that Lisa Jewell DM'd me, but I actually don't think it was a dream because I was posting a lot about her books. Like, and why wouldn't she DM me? You know, Lisa Jewell UK. Oh yeah, all of her books are in the UK. I love UK. Based she books. did. I'm telling you. No, I okay. I have to respond to her. So maybe so you could get her on the Redheads. I know. I'm sure a lot of authors would want to come on the Redheads, but it's not really something that we've broached. Oh, it's not something you're open to. No, I'm open to it. And I had said a while ago that if I ever had more bandwidth and like wanted to take on more, one thing I would want to do is add another episode of the Redheads. Like we do an episode once a month and I would love to do two a month. And the one a month is the book club. And the other one is like, you know, if there's an author that just came out with a book. Or just like book chat. Yeah. Or like talking with like book influencers, fellow readers, like just doing a kind of more chit chat episode that's book centric, but... I have not found the time, but still, that is something I'd like to do. First of all, I didn't know that that was like a goal of yours, and now it is my mission to help you achieve that goal. So here's what I propose. Okay. What if I join the Redheads, but for the other episode? Would that help you? How? No. Like, because like, I would just coordinate everything. So like, yes, you would still have to do the work, but like, I would just do it all for you, and like, you would just sit down in the chair. No, it's, the work, I, I, it's. It's all she right. She doesn't want me involved in her passions. No, I mean, we invite you on the Redheads every time you have something to say about the book. You're still doing your lashes. By the way, I'm just like, it's the same as like if I was sitting here like combing my hair. Like it's just. I know you do that sometimes, but it's giving like not paying full attention to your sister who's only has eyes for you. Wow. I mean, I literally just offered like uh, up like my life to help you with your passion <laughs> oh project. And, and not only did you turn me down, you're now yelling at me. So maybe we should just get into the fast five stories. How about that? You are always welcome on an episode of The Redheads. When you've read the book, you always join. And maybe you'll join that's the next not, one because it's... That's just not what I was talking about. Oh, I would love to. Even though it's been, like a, it's been like a month since I read the book. And you know, all those thrillers, when you read so many of them, you forget like who was who, who died, who killed who. Yeah. It's true about the thrillers. They're kind of a dime a dozen. Which, it's easy to have like a good book that you like, but it's kind of hard to stand out among the pack. It is. It's, you know what's giving? Thriller. Thriller. Right. What books are you going to read for your vacation? So glad you brought that up because I was just packing and I told you guys the story about how I stole the book from the rental house. And like, honestly, like ever since I said it on the toast, I wish I didn't say it. Cause like I literally stole, like I admitted to thievery. Um, but I'm not packing a checked bag. So like I have to be really, really tight. And like, I just would prefer to bring just my Kindle than my Kindle and my stolen book. I think my stolen book will remain at home for me. And I bought like, I'm going to buy like a dumb romance book because I'm going to be on the beach with like a bunch of friends. I probably won't even read that much. I'll be drinking. Like it's not that, it's not that kind of trip. Oh, okay. But for the plane ride, like maybe it's, it's not a serious reading trip. Like, don't worry. Yeah. Also, but Jackie, I, this is the kind of stuff we talk about if you'd let me join the Redheads for the second episode. Okay. I will. Oh, you want to be on the second episode? That's what I was saying. Like, I don't want to be a Redhead. Like you guys have oh, a great thing going on. I thought you were offering saying, to join the Redheads book club no no that's like handled but for the second episode like I could kind of just be like your assistant almost like where I would like we, we could come up with ideas and like I would find the authors to interview or influencers and I would set it all up and you would just have to sit down and then I would edit too oh my god that's so nice would you want to be on camera like would, would you want to be on you, the show uh, oh I'm sorry you thought I was just like oh. no, at first I thought you wanted to be on oh the show, you don't want me to be on the show you want me to do all the fucking through. work oh my god this is literally insane this no, is no, insane. first First, I thought you wanted to be on the book club. Then I, then you want to be on the second episode. Then it started to sound like you wanted to be my producer. No, I'm just saying like I would t- like this is something you want to do, but like you don't have the bandwidth for everything involved. So I'll do like I'll be we'll do it together, but like okay. I'll do everything like that's but required. You know what? I'm sorry I brought it up. Just an episode of the toast. No, but like we would interview authors, authors. influencers who like to read. We would just maybe have like episodes where we talk just about books. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we would be doing it together. Okay. You know what? Like, I really wish I didn't offer because you're making, like, you're making fun of me now. No, I'm not. You just misrepresented the idea in so many different ways. I'm going back to brushing my eyebrows. Okay. And your eyelashes. Um, okay. Just think about it. Okay. 
I actually, I will think about it, Lettard, and I do hope that in the next few months I'm able to take on more, you know, things No, change. I really think it's time we take the redheads to the next level, and I think I have to get involved, like, for real, because we have weirdly, like, so much influence when it comes to reading books. Like, we need to build a brand around that, you know? Yeah, I do also get some, like, inbound emails to the redheads email that are, like, interesting that I don't even... Respond really- to? <laughs> Or like, like you, like that's what I'm saying. Like you're managing the brand and like, no offense. Like that's why you are where you are. Like you're just, you're too booked and busy. Like mom of two, full-time uh, working mom. Like I get it. Let me help. It's true. The brand could go to the next level. Like we should become Hello Sunshine and. Right. Or like, okay, not Hello Sunshine. Like let's be real. But like a Jenna Bush Hager vibe, you know? Okay. She's literally just as big. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Like, um, no, like an like Oprah. The- yeah, like similar to Oprah, Reese, Jenna, Red. Red. The name on everybody's lips. No, I, I really like where your head's at. And that is goals, like Redhead's production company. Right. Let me help you. Okay. We'll Just strategize. You. I like, thank you. I appreciate your persistence. You've got the job. Great. You're hired. Start on Monday? <laughs> no, it's a holiday and we appreciate Start the on weekend. Tuesday. <laughs> Start on Tuesday. Okay, now we can get into the stories that are storying on this day of Thurs. Without further ado, here are the Fast Five stories that you need to know. And the Fast Five stories that you need to know are brought to you by a new show on Netflix. It is called The Trust, A Game of Greed. Eleven strangers are given a quarter of a million dollars to split evenly. Will they take their fair share, or will the allure of more money cause them to vote each other out to keep more for themselves? It's the ultimate test of human nature, as greed and mistrust threaten to destroy even the strongest of relationships. In the game, everyone starts as winners, and they can all leave as winners if they choose to share. I just know if I was on this show, like, my God, everybody would be going home with nothing because I would ruin it for everyone. Like, I'm a greedy person, and I also am just very mistrusting like I just don't believe that this group of people would like have my best interest at heart so the show is premiering on Netflix it's a new competition series where 11 strangers are being offered a quarter of a million dollars the choice is theirs it's the ultimate test of good versus greed the players start as winners the cast is super diverse they come from all different walks of life so it's a great wide set of people all from different socioeconomic backgrounds which obviously like makes it more interesting because some people might really need the money this might not be considered a lot of money to some of the people um it sounds like a really great show I can't wait to watch the trust a game of greed which is now streaming only on Netflix. Yeah, that's right. The game, the show is called The Trust, a game of greed, and it is streaming now only on Netflix. Today's episode is also brought to you by BetterHelp. Around the new year, we can get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right. Maybe you finally organized one part of your space and you want to tackle another. Maybe you're taking your supplements every morning and now you want to actually eat breakfast too. Therapy can help you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. The new year is always a great time to get into a good therapy groove if you've never tried therapy or if you're, you know, not been super committed to it. New year, new you, great time of year, and BetterHelp is an amazing resource because it's done entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and of course you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge, which is what I think a lot of people's favorite part of BetterHelp is because one of the most awkward things about therapy, traditional therapy, is, you know, the awkwardness of it. It's very common not to jive with the first therapist that you meet and then having to call and cancel and change can be so weird. BetterHelp totally gets it. Super easy to change. It's very common. It's not a big deal if the first person you're matched with doesn't, you know, work out personality wise they will help you change switch therapists at any time for no charge you can also um talk to a therapist however you'd like whether text video chat phone call etc so celebrate the progress you've already made and visit betterhelp.com slash toast to get 10 percent off your first month today that's betterhelp h-e-l-p dot com slash toast betterhelp.com slash t-o-a-s-t thank you uh you're welcome Okay, our first story, in, no, in order of no importance, I would say. I would say these Love. are five equally important stories. Love. And equally unimportant. Love. John Mulaney and Olivia Munn make their red oh. carpet debut after three years together. So John Mulaney and Olivia Munn are red carpet official, finally. I had no idea that they weren't yet. They literally have a child together. I didn't know, like, 
we were waiting. No, they're to like ch- Juggies so polarizing. It's insane. We were waiting to check red carpet off the list, but they attended the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Scientists 14th Governor's Award in LA. And they looked unreal for a first. She looked Gorgina Vagina. Yeah, by they I mean she because I don't look at the man. She yeah. looked amazing. No, shook by that. The hair, love. No, the everything. I guess the I, dress could use a steam now that I'm, I was really just looking at her. There are people who's like, this is their Roman empire. You know, they were obsessed with John Mulaney and Anna Tendler. Like there are some people who can't even look at these two. Like it's so, it runs so deep. And while I, you know, respect that, I'm not a part of that group of people. Like I don't care. Um, but it's really crazy how like they, these two like hide out. Like they're considered so controversial. It's so dumb. I feel like once it's been a few years and you have a child, especially child. once you have a child, it's like, Tabby LaRassa. Yeah, no, I think a lot of people get really stuck on the fact that he was with Anna Marie Tendler for so many years and they never had a baby. And then, like, the second he broke up with her, he had a baby with Olivia Munn, like, that day. No, it's not, it's not, like, the best of human behavior. No. But it's what happened. They and I will say, I've never have been, a like, family. a John Mulaney. Right. No, it's so common. Yeah. I've never been a John Mulaney fan. I don't think I've actually ever even seen his comedy. But once he became, like public enemy number one I found him to be a lot more interesting than like the guy who just everybody loved like it's uh, who cares but once like people started to hate him I was like oh I think there might be more to this complex fella and I watched his special um called I think it's called baby J it's his most recent special yeah me too where he talks about he had an insane addiction and he talks about you know going from being this you know Hollywood sweetheart where everybody loved couldn't do anything wrong to then becoming, you know, controversial public enemy number one. So we actually had, like, a lot of interesting things to talk about, and I thought it was an excellent special. I found myself, like, cackling many times. Highly recommend. I watched it. I don't remember feeling that way. But I also, you like, recap Jackie, the entire thing. Likeability is a prison. Yeah, you would recap the entire thing before I watched it, so there was, like, nothing new for me. That's why I don't, like, the, when you were trying to recap The Crown today slash yesterday, I just didn't want to hear your POV, because then it's like, why do I need to watch? Because... I agree. No, for sure. So I'll just shut the fuck up is what you're saying. I would say to hold off until I've caught up with you. Shut the fuck up until further notice. I got it. Okay. (laughs) Anyways, they were looking great. The crazy thing about Olivia Munn to me is Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. No, by the way, the craziest thing about Olivia Munn to me is wag. Oh, and not in the Aaron Rodgers way. Yeah, no, oh, she was a wag who was a co-owner no. in wag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not being like a wife and girlfriend of professional athletes. She was like one of the founders of that dog walking app, WAG. And she was like in all the commercials. And it's like, everyone was just like, is that Olivia Munn or someone who looks like her? Literally. Literally. Also, the craziest thing about Olivia Munn to me is Aaron Rodgers. And the craziest mm-hmm. thing about Olivia Munn and Aaron Rodgers to me is like the Rodgers family feud. And the craziest thing is that Jordan Rodgers and JoJo Fletcher are related to Aaron Rodgers. And they're and all the on craziest... TV every single day and they don't talk to each other. Every day? They're always hosting something. Okay. They, they host like couple shows and home shows and... yeah. The craziest thing. And he's on SEC I've, Sports. Okay, that was like a while ago. I don't know if he's still on. I feel like. The craziest thing about Olivia Munn is that her and Aaron Rodgers like didn't make it, but JoJo and Jordan did. You know, and I feel like at the time it was like Olivia Munn and Aaron Rodgers were together for so long. They were this like it couple in Hollywood. And they Jordan and JoJo, I feel like they like looked down on as like this like trash reality TV show. And it's like all for money and fame and greed. And now they're like happily married and Olivia Munn and Aaron Rodgers like are not. Yeah. Margo was saying the other day that the Rodgers family feud is her Roman Empire. And that's a really good one. It's a really good one. Like, to, like what the fuck happened that these people cannot talk? No, but like the whole family does talk except not to Aaron. I know what happened. I don't know. It's got to be big. Yeah, but I have to say, if you're like the one person who's on the outs with your entire family, like your entire family still talks, but not to you, and you don't talk to your entire family, you are the problem. Like whatever happened, you fucked up. I agree, especially because from what we've seen of his family, like they're very loving and they're very close and they're like the Rogers boys. Mm -hmm. There's another one, Luke. Yeah, it's not like you're on the outs with your family, but 
the rest of the family doesn't get along either and it's all kind of right it's not like this toxic family where nobody talks to each other yeah it seems very loving and you know homes home is where the heart is not homestead home is where the heart is it's so true you know like flannels yeah fireplaces who could forget flannels (laughs) fireplaces yeah yeah. no i know what you're saying but i I get it i get it (laughs) It's like cozy family vibes. No, I get it. I get it. Some of the best vibes out there. Right, right. No, I get it. So anyways, they're a red carpet official as if you needed that too. And I'm... I'm no, I, by the way, I didn't know I needed that, but I did. I, I agree. It did something I love, for me. Yeah. Are you ready for our next story? Mm-hmm. A little casting news, which is some of oh. my favorite kind of news. Oh, Yeah. Selena Gomez will be playing Linda Ronstadt in a new biopic. So Selena Gomez will play Linda Ronstadt in an upcoming biopic. Variety has confirmed the pop singer teased the role Tuesday night by posting a picture of Linda's 2013 memoir called called Simple Dreams. Cool. The music, I know. I, <laughs> the music I biopic it. is currently in pre-production with producers, including her manager, Linda's manager, who also produced a, docu- produced a documentary about her. No other casting has been announced. I mean, Selena Gomez, like, Loki is, like, an actress. She's, like, known as a pop star, but, like, she's literally an actress. That's what I was going to say. I think one of the things, Selena Gomez does many things, some better than others, and I think one thing that she does best of all is act. I think I she's agree. a very good actress. She's very good in Only Murders in the Bil- Building. Woody Allen, like, loves her because she's a very good actress, and I think mm-hmm. not only is she talented enough, but they do look alike, and people have said that they look alike. They are also both of Mexican descent. I think this is an absolutely perfect cast. I agree and I like that she like I've never been like an enormous fan of her music um and so I like that she's clearly for the time being focusing on acting only murders Golden Globe Emmy nominated um and I think that this is a great next move for her because only murders in the building while it's like a Hulu show whatever it's very prestigious like it's not like just being on any no, she's TV at show. the Golden Globes she not only that but like Martin Short and Steve Martin like two of the greatest comedians literally of our time Meryl Streep Paul Rudd it's not just any TV show so it's like her being on like the most elite it's like what probably I think it's in the last like 10 years the most critically like the highest critically rated show in terms of like ratings and stuff so it's it's really supreme and so her doing a movie next and having it be like a musical one is very smart I think this is actually very good management and like decision making on Selena Gomez's behalf I agree what does Linda Ronstadt sing? She sings Heart Like a Wheel and Simple Dreams. Those were her albums. I don't know. I'm... I like Her name rolls off the tongue, Linda yes. Ronstadt, but I couldn't really tell you who she is. She also sounds Jewish. Okay, Maybe here's her is. like number. Hold on. Here's her number one song. Look at this face. Is this a man? I know the years are showing. Oh, it's a duet. Let me be. They never okay, not for me. And I, and I don't know it. So, bats lacha, Selena. Bats lacha. Good luck. It's, I, I think it could be very, very good. No notes on this casting. Yeah, I think it's a good call. I do, like, I don't know Linda Ronstadt, but I imagine this is, like, very interesting to a lot of people, like, who, who either grew up with her or who are fans of her music. Because I I love when a celebrity is being depicted in a film and, like, the casting begins. Like, how long did we talk about Elvis? Yeah. And then we had Freddie Mercury and we had Elton John. Like, I love movies like that. Yeah, yep. Are you ready for our next story, speaking of actors? I think, yeah. A new report says that cruel and manipulative Matthew Perry lied about his sobriety before his death, his pals say. Okay, literally today, like five stories came out, like slanderous against Matthew Perry. Yeah, Matthew Perry alleged she was clean and sober for 19 months leading up to his shocking death. However, a new report claims that this wasn't the case. The Friends star who shot to global fame after landing the role of Chandler Bing on the hit sitcom was found unresponsive in a hot tub in L.A. at his home on October 28th. Friends who saw the actor near the end of his life insist that Matthew, who spoke openly about his lifelong struggles with addiction, was sober and in a good place. However, three sources tell Us Weekly that's not true. They said Matthew's talk about being sober while promoting his 2022 memoir was a lie, they said in a report published Wednesday. He wanted to sell books. Everything was crafted and manipulated. The truth wasn't important. 
The source also told the outlet, apparently he crashed his Aston Martin many times while high, noting that the alleged accidents happened during a time that Perry claimed to be sober. He just damaged the car and no one was hurt, but he did not consider that he could have killed someone. The source alleged that Perry would use the celeb dating app Raya to meet young women who would bring him drugs. He would do oh the FaceTime. Yeah, they said he would do the FaceTime thing and get to know them. Then it would be like, let's hang out. And he would say to come to his house. He wasn't out in public anymore. That's how he snuck things past people. Addicts are smart and Matthew was brilliant. As previously reported, an autopsy determined that Matthew died from acute effects of ketamine while with contributing factors listed as drowning, coronary artery disease, and buprenorphine effects. The thing is, like, I just read Matthew Perry's book, and, like, I feel like he would cite examples where he lied about being sober for, like, many long periods of time and for different, like, work commitments and stuff. So if, when he was promoting this book, he wasn't sober, like... I don't think that's necessarily like incongruous. Duplic- yeah, or like duplicitous of him. Like he made it abundantly clear in the book. Like he knows how to get sober. He doesn't know how to stay sober. Like he knows exactly what to do when it's time to detox in the most like painless, you know, for the most part way. Um, it's a lifelong struggle for him. He's never really going to figure it out. So like if he had slipped, I don't know. To me, that doesn't like undo everything he said in the book. I, I actually, I feel like it's like a more authentic it makes, it makes everything in his book l- feel even more relevant. Yeah. Also, regarding the ketamine, I think a lot of people were confused because um, ketamine infusions are used to treat depression and yes. drug addiction. However, the medical examiner had noted that the amount found in his system could not have been from his final infusion treatment a week and a half before his death. Ketamine's half-life is only three to four hours, and the amount found in his system was equivalent to the general anesthesia given to surgical patients. So it was an ab- use of ketamine right likely and right and it's possible like he didn't take enough to like kill himself but because he was in a hot tub he drowned right right and so compounded it was fatal for him and so yes this is different from the Matthew that we thought he was at the end of his life but like no Jackie if you read the book it's not like he said like I'm sober now for life like it's literally a day-by-day thing yeah I don't know, but he's past now. It just... No, to come out and, like, posthumously, like, be a source to Us Weekly, like, you're fucking disgusting. Yeah, it just feels, like, icky to Mm -hmm. hear, like, these personal details about him when he's passed. Like... Let him rest. What's the point? Yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't like this at all. Especially, I feel, like, fiercely defensive of Matthew Perry ever since I read his book. Like, it was so good. Reading someone's book will do that to you. Oh, my God. Do you know how many times, literally, last night... I referenced Josh Peck's book because it was like so full of just goodness. Like really, I I find it relevant to bring up in so many different conversations. If I'm talking about child actors, Josh Peck. If I'm talking about weight, Josh Peck. If I'm talking about drug addiction, Josh Peck. If I'm like literally anything. I It's one of the best books. I literally need to read it like next. Oh, and he's like funny too. No, I know. I, I like it was on my want to read, but then it just kind of got pushed down. But like I'm going to read that this month. I'm going to put it back at the top of my list. No, That's and like, like his exactly mom. He was raised by a guy. single mom. He was raised by a single mom, and like she's really a main character. And I had read it around the same time that I read uh, Jeanette McCurdy's book, which you know they're so similar, child actors from Nickelodeon. Um, but she was really like put out by her mother and really used by her mother. And then after her book, I read Josh's, and Josh just loved his mom so much, and she would have done anything for him. And all he it like the acting was so his idea, like. He begged his mom and she dragged him around town. Like, it was just the so, so the opposite of Jeanette McCurdy. And he, like, the way he wrote about his mom was just so, it was, you're going to love it. I seriously can't wait. I might start that tonight. Oh, nope. I have to add it the redheads. Oh, damn. Well, passion maybe, strikes again. Passion strikes again, but maybe tonight as in Thursday night because it's Thursday. Oh. Loophole. <laughs> I like what you did there. Okay. Are you ready for our next story? No. I didn't think you were. You really didn't look ready. I didn't want to say anything, but. That's so rude. Our next story (laughs) is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from podcasts, products, to content, to time, all in one place, and all on your terms. So whatever your reasoning is for creating a website, whether you want to have 
a website made or you want to revamp your website, you feel like it's a little dated, the product features at Squarespace cover the gamut of really anything you could possibly need. They have asset libraries. You can sell custom merch. You can sell your products in the online store. Their website templates are super flexible, so you can get started with one of their professional templates with designs for every category and use case, and then just customize your look, update your content, and add features that fit your unique needs. You can also host video content on Squarespace websites. So if you're like a videographer and you want to showcase your portfolio, some of your previous work, you can host video content, organize your video library, showcase your content online in beautiful pages and sell access to your videos with member areas. Also a point of sale. So if you have an e-commerce website and you want to sell in person, you can do that by connecting a square reader to the Squarespace app, and that'll keep all of your in-person and online orders, inventory, and customer data in sync with one another. So head to squarespace.com. You'll get a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash toast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. That's squarespace.com slash toast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Great. Thank you. You know what? Our next story is that Robert De Niro thought his name was called at the Golden Globes when Robert Downey Jr. won. Oh, no. Yep. Robert De Niro's... De Niro's... De Niro. His ears definitely perked up when he heard his name first announced as the winner of the 2024 Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor in a Motion Picture. Um, A second later, however, it was Robert Downey Jr. making his way to the stage, but such are the risks of being an actor named Robert who starred in one of the most acclaimed films of the year. It's giving album of the year goes to random access memory, not read by Taylor Swift. Oh, I didn't know that was... Have you ever seen that video? Oh, my God. Okay, she was nominated for Album of the Year for Red, and they have all the faces on the, of the nominees, like, up in little squares, and they say, and the Album of the Year goes to... And the person really, really, like, lingered on the R. And her, you see her in the box, and her whole team, they're like, oh! And oh my it's gosh. random access memory. You have to watch it. It's so awkward. That is very awkward. And it's crazy that those things even happened to Robert De Niro. No, but it actually makes sense. I, I didn't I, I didn't put together that Robert De Niro and Robert Downey Jr. had the same first name. Even as I just said it right now, like it didn't compute. Yeah, and it's Robert D. Oh, so true. <laughs> this is two days in a row talking about Robert De Niro. Actually, three days because I think on, on Monday or Tuesday we talked about the joke that Golden was made. Globes. Yeah. And then Wednesday, yeah, we talked about him at Jennifer Lawrence's wedding. This is um, our Robert De Niro streak. Do you think we should keep it going? Like try and bring him up on Friday? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. What's your favorite Robert De Niro movie? And why is it The Intern? Oh, it's The Intern. <laughs> no, I know. The Intern is the most amazing movie. I completely agree. And I want to think the folks. Is similar, the same but different, The Internship. I knew you were going to say that. The intern is better. I'm sorry. I love them both so much, like equally but differently. And I'm just so grateful for movies made about interns. No, I can. By the way, should we hire an intern (laughs) and like film it? And follow him or her around and call it The Intern? Yeah, no. The Intern with Robert De Niro and Anne Hathaway like is the best movie of all time. And I want to thank the folks at E for always having it as like their movie of the day. Like it's on cable 45 times a week. It's the best. It's so amazing. Of course, Nancy Myers slays. Oh my God. That's such an underrated Nancy Myers movie because it's like so not her vibe. Like, yeah, and there's no like central home where everyone's Brooklyn? congregating. Yes, there the is. It's Anne Hearth. Hathaway's townhouse, but it's like not even chic. No, but it's not home and hearth over there. It's very like my husband's cheating. No, she doesn't cheating. homestead. My husband's cheating. Yeah, no. I actually like, I don't like that as for Nancy Myers. Like it's a good movie. I like the movie, but like I don't like it for Nancy Myers. Yeah. She could do better, you know? <laughs> no, but it's really good. The movie's amazing. So... Robert De Niro has the same name as Robert Downey Jr. And that was confusing for him. And I understand why it would be. Yeah. Do you think, like, he cares? Like, do you think he got really excited that he was about to win a Golden Globe? Like, or no? I don't think so. Like, at that point. But it's worth noting that he's been nominated 10 times and only won once in 1981. So it's been 30 years. Wait. I read something today. And by read, I saw it on a TikTok. Apparently, like, there's, like, big drama with Bradley Cooper. That's and Killian Murphy. Killian is Oppenheimer. So apparently, like, 
Bradley Cooper has been nominated for a Golden Globe like 30 times and has never won. And this movie, Maestro, is like this big passion project of his. He's been working on it for six years. And like, he's like wanting to make it like his big moment, his big thing. Like he wants to win all the awards. It's like, this is really important to him. And he did that variety actors and actors um, thing with Emma Stone and talked about like, you know, he really respected how, you know, long she worked on the role and he and he worked on his role. And he like made a little slight towards Killian Murphy, who I believe um, did not spend like a lot of time prepping for Oppenheimer in the sense that he didn't have the role booked for six years before he actually got to work, you know? Mm-hmm. So apparently they like have this beef, according to this dumb TikTok that I read. And when the best actor in a drama category came, obviously they both were nominated and Killian won. And like that, it was like even more layered that Killian won. Okay, but I feel like, like Killian doesn't even care and like Bradley's fighting with himself. No, that's exactly what I'm feeling like. Like, okay, Bradley, Killian doesn't even Go know off, your King. name. <laughs> like you know, he's like, not Killian, talking about you. Killian's like, you know, lions don't lose sleep over the whatever of sheep. Opinions of sheep. Right. And trash talk of sheep. And subtle Wearing jives. big prosthetic noses. Yeah. But I think the big one is the Oscar. So let's yeah. see what happens there. But like, I don't know much, but I know that no one's talking about Bradley Cooper's movie Maestro. Like no, nobody cares. Not a soul. And, and I have to wonder why. Yeah. What platform is it on? Netflix? It's not in the theaters? I don't know, but there was like no like big marketing no, I think it thing. it was on Netflix. That's a good point because we were just looking it up. Like the the only thing I really heard about the movie was the nose drama, which like wasn't overwhelmingly positive for him. So like I didn't feel like there was like a coordinated marketing campaign. I didn't see like buses or billboards. Like no one's talking about it because like they gave us nothing to talk about. Yeah, it's on Netflix. Yeah. I'm good. No, I'm definitely good. Yeah, no, if I was like really wanting stuff to watch, maybe I would find want to watch it. But I've my plate is full. My cup runneth over. She can't even get two episodes of Redheads down a month. Like, what do you guys expect? Right. I haven't watched The Crown. I haven't watched Southern Charm. I haven't watched Salt Lake City. I haven't watched Beverly Hills. Like, my show is all the way down there. I haven't watched Barbie. It's going to have to take a backseat. Yeah. I haven't watched Matilda the Musical. Like, that's insane. Oh, that's disgusting of you. It's disgusting. Like, when I saw the trailer for it, I was so excited and... I don't even know if it's, I don't know anything about it. It like didn't make waves here in the States. No, it didn't, but it looks so freaking cute. Yeah. So yeah, I have my priorities in order. That you do, that you do. Are you ready for our fifth and final story? Yes. About our queen, Amy Schumer, unveiling a topless selfie with an extra 40 pounds, she says. (laughs) Amy Schumer is feeling pretty at all sizes. The comedian shared a topless photo celebrating her body on January 7th, posting the partially nude mirror selfie on her Instagram story, showed Amy smiling while raising her hand in the air. She posed in front of the glass walls of her shower. She said, still got it. And then underneath, she wrote that 40 extra pounds. I just want to say, like, she's funny. Like, this is a funny thing to do. And I know she's, like, poking fun at her weight, but I actually thought she looked, like, bomb in the photo. Like, really tight and right. Like, I didn't even see cellulite, like. Tight and right. Yeah. Tight and right. And I'm sorry, like, every time I, like, go to Amy Schumer's social media or, like, I watch something that she did, like, I'm sorry, she's funny. I feel like people rail on her a lot. She's funny. She is funny. I feel like she suffered from, like, overexposure. And she, she got so big so fast because she was really so funny, like, you know there's no bigger Amy Schumer fan on the planet than yeah. Dana. And it is actually one of my career goals, in addition to doing a second episode of The Redheads a Month, to meet Amy Schumer, like, on a professional level as, mm-hmm. a, like, a, a peer, in a way, and tell her that that little girl that she sees at all of her <laughs> shows is my best friend and she's very normal. Yeah, for sure. Um, but you're right. Like, her career trajectory was so unorthodox. Like, she shot to a level of fame so fast that female comedians just, like, don't get it. She was kind of like a Matt Reif, in a sense. Um, But once, you know, she got shown, her work got shown to, like, a mass audience, people were like, wow, she really is funny, and she got even bigger. Matt Reif's having, like, the opposite effect. Like, he got this big Netflix special, and, like, people aren't into it. Um, And then it was, like, bus, club, another club bus, Madison Square Garden, selling out arenas, movie, movie, movie. And I think it got to be, by the time she did that movie with Goldie Hawn, Mm -hmm. she should have stopped right before that. Yeah, yeah, just because 
you do a lot of things like the quality isn't always there but you right. know, the studio wants you and so I think it's been up and down but at her core she's an extremely funny person like Trainwreck and I Feel Pretty are two of the funniest movies of our time I feel you know I I literally can't talk about the movie I Feel Pretty like it's literally my life yeah it is like I I had never and I feel like I've said this on the toes now like three or four times I have never walked into a movie and like seen my life on screen like <laughs> it was crazy and I remember going with Margo and she like didn't get it I'm like oh my god you suck like because she just doesn't have like these problems that I have and she was like no it was like funny and cute but like she didn't walk out like emphatic like me yeah that movie was fucking brilliant it doesn't get us as much credit as um it train wreck because because train wreck was so good but I'm sorry I feel pretty like <laughs> is amazing it is amazing and we should add it that's a good for the content list yes even though it's a feel-good film, it's funny. The content list is dead in the water, right? Right. Because we like, didn't it, referenced it once on our trip. Yeah. But that's a good family movie for you know mature adults. Yeah, it's also just like it's got a great message. It has a great message. No, and like when Amy hits her head and then like enters this dystopian utopian universe. That's how I live my life. Like, it's just, it's so good. Yeah. Anyways, uh, also note about her selfie is that her bathroom is gorgeous. Yes, yes. Amy lives on the Upper West Side, I believe. Um, and yeah, Amy Kim, is, Kim Kardashian is went to her apartment on behalf. Yes. A- Amy Schumer is also extremely rich. And I'm happy for her. And I assume that means she has nice things. Yeah. Yeah, I like the style. It's very big and... She has a toto. Ooh. Looks like a clawfoot tub and a towel drying rack. Ooh. She uses Cetaphil. Related I saw the theme. Cetaphil. I saw the Cetaphil, which is so Amy Schumer. Yeah. No, it was just um, very cute. So that is our show for Thursday, for today. For today, tomorrow. my favorite day, which is Thursday. It's and the best tomorrow, day today. Tomorrow, being Friday's episode, is going to be the same as this, you know? A little audio only. Might be out later in the day because I'm going to be on, like, different Mexican time zone. I actually don't even know what time it's going to be, so it's going to be weird. Um, so stay tuned for that. We love you all so much. Thank you so much for listening to the Joseph Millennium Morning Show where we deliver the fast-side stories. You need to know everybody the Friday. YouTube, so watching this on YouTube. Please subscribe to me this video. Thumbs up. Also, this podcast. Any podcast. Me, fans. Let's find it. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. This is podcast. Find us on social media. Find us on Beautiful, stunning, and wickedly talented we are. Have an amazing Thursday, and we'll see you on the next one. Love ya. Bye. Love ya. Bye.